Hey there everybody, Joe here. Good to see you again. We are now on our third painting in this series, so I wanna add a big curling beach wave as it rolls in on, you know, a beach that I would love to be on. I'm here at a little bend on the beach, at Venice Beach, and so I really wanna do a scene that has the bending shape of the waves where we're looking down the wave and we have the perspective. So just like in our other painting with the glassy lake, you know, we have this big swooping bend in the front, all of this vertical, you know, shape where this is bending, but then it's all just squished horizontal out here. So the way I'm gonna get my perspective is to just really use the tiniest bit, it's always amazing to me, the tiny bit of angle on my brush stroke, just that little triangle that I can make to cause a wave in perspective, and then just put the white water, and that'll define so much. I'm hoping that I can get that perspective look. Just watch how awesome this looks. This is what we're headed toward. I can um, control the scale of these by how many of these little shapes I put, these little puffy shapes coming up on the cloud. So if I make more of a complex edge, then, then I'll get more of the look of a distant cloud. I don't know, I feel like a, a long one kind of coming across the front would be cool. Let's go like this, bright white. My uh, transition color or my cloud glow color. I called it the cloud glow color. That's what's gonna make it look like there's light in my clouds. Look how pretty that is. I love that look of a, 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 a darker cloud in front of a lighter cloud. Make some, some puffies coming up out of the shadows. All you do is, you know, you put that glow color anywhere you want to put clouds, clouds coming up into the light. Just use that glow color on your way. On your way up into the light, take that color with you. Now that the paint has dried and my clouds are in place, this is my opportunity to just look for those key favorite points. My favorite spots, that's all it is. Watch this, I'm gonna go dark color and light color. We're gonna create a distant hill and we're gonna say that it's covered with jungly green. And to make this distant, I'm gonna use my light purple and mix it with that until the color is not nearly as green and maybe even starts to turn gray. You know, just like when you're, when you're uh, looking at a mountain from far away and sometimes it looks like the top of that mountain is just a cloud on the horizon. We can add the cloud color in here to get those to look even further. Put some dabs of some brighter trees up here somewhere, I don't know. Now here's something that I really wanna use in my painting. It seems like whenever light bounces off of something, just reflection, it gets more purple, or let's just say it moves toward purple. We can see that happening right here as the sand is not purple and the sky is also not purple. But when we look at this reflection, it's the most purple thing in the picture. The light from the sky combined with the light from the sand, they're turning more violet as the reflection happens. And so this is a valuable effect that can really make my beach look nice and reflective and wet. Now you can also see a dark strip going down the beach where the sand is wet, but not wet enough to be that reflective. So it just gets darker from the water. So we wanna do light colored sand, dark sand, then our light gray violet reflection all before we get down to the water to get a more realistic looking beach. As I get closer to the water, I'll add my darker purple and that's gonna mix. It's gonna make the sand darker, you know, because wet sand will be darker, right? And it's also gonna make it bluer. And then I get that, that reflection of the, of the sky coming off the most wet sand there. And where I want it to look dry, I'll add white, which is going to remove color, really, lighten it and remove color. And that's what I want because, you know, have you ever dropped water on a rock or on the dirt and been like, whoa, look at all that color. You know, you see all the color when it gets wet. And so we want to have less color where it's dry. So I just want some kind of a bush. I, I don't know what kind of a bush this is. I don't need to know. I just need it to look good. And so I'm just going to put little, little branches kind of fingering out. You know, let's bring it down a little bit lower. Let's grab that bright green. Put some little little bits of leaves that kind of shoot out. 
we'll grab, I'm going to get some of this excess paint out of my brush, so it might be handy to keep a, you know, a scrap something, cardboard, piece of wood, piece of your house, siding, <laughs> whatever. And so I'm going to put the sand color down here. I can put little holes of sunlight coming through. So here's my sand color, and we're just going to put this in here and bring it right up to the right up to the edge of the beach wherever we're going underwater here's going to be be our shallow water that does not have the reflection of the sky on it by the way the water here may be filled with bright light because it's sunlit you know we're looking down and there's sun shining down on this very shallow water and so we have a lot of light bouncing out of here Here's an effect that I really want to have in my painting is these beautiful little squiggles of light that we call caustics. But you can see it happening everywhere along here. So we'll see that all over a real sunny beach as well. And so I'm going to try to develop a brush technique that gets dark spots in between bright squiggles. That's going to be a real challenge. But the goal is to make it look like there's darker shadowed areas and then the light kind of got pulled away from those dark areas and concentrated into those little squiggles because that's what's happening you know we have just a million little magnifying glasses and the light is just just being channeled into one spot from all those curved wave shapes here's how we do all of these bright little squiggles I get a little bit on the tip of my brush. I'm gonna push against that tip going sideways. Look how it pushes it to the side. And I like the smoothness of those shapes. So now without thinking about it too much, I'm gonna go like this. Multiple strokes and space them apart enough that I'm going to leave behind those little lines. I wanna take this and put reflection on it. I'll just put a few tiny little waves in here, just a few little spots. And maybe there's some bright white reflection, you know, from all these clouds or, or other things, shallow water, deep water, whatever I want it to be. And lots of reflection, completely doing away with my bright, bright color I used for these, these little squigglies. Mix some of my light atmosphere color in so that this looks nice and distant. And now here's how I do distant beaches, just, just a strip right here just a little strip there's a shoreline let's put a little bit here put some behind these little bushes I made see that we can just put little strips of beach coming in here I'm almost a hundred percent deep water color and I'm going to use a lot more of the reflection little waves wherever a wave ramps up that's where you're going to see the darker colors and wherever the back of the wave tips back like that and that's where you see reflection you know it really seems like it depends on the whole picture you know the whole picture tells the story well, our eyes are very sensitive to texture and so I can make the texture of the waves following that curve and just like just like in our other painting with the glassy lake you know we have this big swooping bend in the front. If I have my shoreline to find and then I just use my brush strokes, make a little bit of a triangle shape, then all we do is we use that white water to put a little curl in the front. You know, I'm just thinking that I'm just gonna dab the white on the left side of it and then just a little bit, a little bit wisping back over the back side of the wave. But a slight underwater color, just right in the peak of that triangle. Watch as the wave goes. You'll see the darker green color right at the peak of the wave that's kind of bending this way. You know, it goes in. And then put that little bit of white water. I think that if the perspective is in place, then I can connect the dots and make us feel like we're looking right down the beach just by making the shapes that we see of that white water. Something fun to try in this painting. I want to bring this down just a bit lower. I want, you know, a little more perspective. Bigger here, smaller here, like it's going further away. So we'll see as it develops. You know, maybe this is like uh, 100, 100 feet out on, on the water. Well, at that distance, a slight angle like this is enough to really make this wave look like it's coming sideways. 
like this. Look at that pretty color. I love it. I'll start using the point of the brush and making smaller shapes. Let's just leave the impression of some, some water that's got, got you know, little waves and different angles on it, catching different amounts of light. You know, we've got that curve and I'm just going to grab the bottom of it and pull it a little more level at the bottom. And then down here, it's completely level as it goes across. So we'll do the same thing, but I'll add the little bit of light, that, that caustic uh, light, I don't know what do you call it, refraction, whatever. Whatever kind of a fancy schmancy word you want to put on it. That's the light that happens at the, at the bottom of the wave here. When these roll in, we can see that deep turquoise color right across the middle. That's like a window into the ocean. So we're looking into the deep ocean right there. So we have these strips of different colors that we can see in every single wave. We have the bright light that's sometimes visible if the water's clear enough. And then we have the deep water color above that where we're looking into the ocean. Then above that we'll have the white water curling over or we might see the shadow uh, of the water as it overhangs like a roof. And you'll actually see the curl like a long tube of air, a bubble under the water. That's the curl. You see that air bubble formed like a tube as it curls. And we'll see the air that's inside of the wave actually reflecting through the wave itself when it curls over. Oh, cool. That was a good one. I love looking at the bright lit up ground underneath those. Let's go like this. Let's take that bright green. We'll put it down here. Just cut off the bottom of the wave right at that baseline that we created, right at that base of the wave. Pure white on top of that. And I'm just gonna cut right across with, with little brush strokes back and forth. Cut right across my reflection and everything and go right up into that wave like this. Look at that, how it comes right down out of the shadow. Goes along the base of the wave and then few little strokes across the areas that I just cut apart. A few little strokes coming down onto the surface of the water again. Just grab that reflection again. So now it looks like there's the, the top layer coming right across and that, that light is just glowing from behind the wave. Then we get a big transparent wave projecting light onto the seafloor. And I think I'm going to really like the drama of that. It doesn't have to happen everywhere, you know. Maybe there's some areas where that's happening, other areas where the light's getting blocked. So I'll just make it taper out and not have so much right there. A little bit goes a long way with these, these effects that you can do. I'm just going to put some white water curling over. So, you know, I always have a lot of fun with, with building this part because it's just those, just those swooping brush strokes. I want to put a lot curling over here, so I just overlap the wave that I painted already. This is where we see that curl happening, and this is the, this is the body of the wave. This is the, the water that's inside of that wave that's curling toward me, and then this is the air pocket that is where the, this is where the surfer is. He's underneath this part right here. This is where you're inside of that tube. And we're seeing that tube through the wave that's curling over the top of it. So we choo, choo, choo. But look at those wisps. Choo, I love the way those, the way those put all that motion on the wave. We'll put some white mist just choo, 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 flying down like that as that wave is just flying through the breeze, curling over. So let's see what happens if we take our, our bigger brush and we'll, we'll kind of tap it on here get the shape to be real, real broken up. Then we'll do just a couple real, real light dabs with this. So let's grab just black. Maybe we'll put a little rock in there. Let's do a small wave. We got a big wave chasing a small wave. This wave's running from the big one. Put a big rock out here. Come on, let's do something, do something fun. This foam is just so fun to observe. As it comes in, I can just watch it pull apart, you know, like bubble gum. 
falling apart, strands start to form. Then we have shadows, shadows under each piece of foam. We have shadows and I want to put those in my painting to make a three-dimensional depth to the water. So recognizing the shape of this common pattern is really valuable. I can make the foam look so much more natural in my picture by watching this happen and kind of reading it. We can see round spots. Look at the negative space in between. Round patches, big areas of negative space separated by skinny strands of foam. So I want to make sure that I look at the negative space, the space in between the foam. Now I'm watching the foam roll in, you know, and when the front of those little waves come right toward me, look, you can see the reflection of the foam in the sand. And you can also see a shadow under that foam. This is just the very front edge. That three-dimensional shape is real important and I want to have that in my picture because I just love the way it looks. So I'm going to use like a gray, blue, violet to put a shadow on the underside of that round shape on that, that strip of foam at the front of these real little waves. So right now I'm just, I'm just going to scribble the colors together. We got a little bit of white. Now doing the white last and a little bit watered down, look how it does this a similar effect as what happened with all my bright squiggles. The white moves out of the way, squishes to the edges of my, of my brush contact, you know, where the brush hits. And this, this is a very watery look because we see more reflection around the edges of water when that happens than we do toward the middle where we're seeing into, into the deeper water. I can put a, a slight shadow under that one. Now I want to see a real bright strip. So here's that same bright color I used for all these. Well, same thing happens that happened here, here, all these. It's going to happen right here beyond the shadow. We're going to have a little bright strip in there and I'll do the same thing. I'll just fade this up. Just bends that light so that bright strip can be a real fun effect. And to make it show up, why don't I just why don't I just lighten my sand a little bit in front of that shadow? Whenever there's some white water, there's also some shadow under it. I can even try that darker purple. It might be too dark. But whichever one does the trick, just put it right at the base because that white water creates a shadow. Just like it does on that giant wave in the background, we want that little bit of purple to mix into the lower edge of this. So it's having all these things in place together that really makes this look. Now let's put little bits of that foam kind of trailing back behind it as well. So, so here I've got a point going this way and it points kind of to these two. They, they point to each other's direction. Well, that's what foam does. It splits apart, you know, like, like pulling apart a piece of chewing gum. We can make whatever squiggly shapes we want in there, but it's these little strands that come off of it pointing to another strand that cause it to look like foam that's pulling apart as the bubbly water comes up behind that front of the wave and pushes, pushes that foam into the smaller pieces. Put a whole bunch of little patches of that foam in here. This little wave has been rolling in for a while and it's just dissipated up here so there's some foam. And, you know, I always try to have look like it has some story to it in a picture wherever I can have it have it look like believable motion. It came from somewhere. It's going somewhere. And now I'm going to adjust the color of the sand. Okay, so let's put pure white down. Pure bright white sand. Adding that, that slight blue violet color where the wet sand reflects the sky. So I was thinking it'd be fun to put a palm tree kind of going right in from the side, just like this. Maybe it goes down and up again like this and we're going to make it, we're going to make a big fat trunk getting closer and closer. Let's go like this. Real big here. This palm tree is going to be kind of overhead. You can hang a hammock from this palm tree. Okay, so now that I've got that trunk in there, let's take the smaller brush and start doing a whole bunch of palm fronds, these bright ones, so that the sun is just it's just coming down and blasting through this dark shadow color now. And we'll make some closer ones like this. Maybe go over some of the same lines. It'll, it'll get yellower as it goes out. 
like this. Start in the middle, work my way to the ends where I want more light shining through. And we'll just get yellower as we, as we get close to the tips of these palm fronds. Look at all the depth that I start to get when I put the darker in front of the lighter. A couple of bright highlights on the fronds that are coming down in the foreground here. I'm gonna go ahead and put some patches of light coming through this guy. Have the light coming across this trunk. I'm gonna make the light more intense on top. Like that, let's really get some sunlight. Light edge right on that underside, see that? That says, you know, when you have that different color on the very edge of something, that says different angle, different light, must be three dimensional. And I think we could use a palm tree in here too. Let's do like a little, there we go, and then black down the middle. Okay. I'm happy with that one. What if we just did a little silhouette of a palm tree kind of here on this distant shore? We just got to add that, that bit of purple. Let's just go like that make kind of a blurry little palm tree. Yeah, there we go. We got palm trees in our picture. All right, nice. All right, you know what I think would be fun? And here is a little couple of dolphins swimming in the wave. So we're just going to put a little dolphin body going right through here. Look, just that underwater shadow color, the deep water, the deep turquoise color. And what I'll do is just kind of distort the shape a little bit. I'll just put some, I'll put some little bumps along the edge. See that shape? Let's put a dorsal fin in there. Like that, let's put some, put some little fins on the dolphin. Let's see, the front fins are a little further forward than the dorsal fin, aren't they? Let's put them like right there, put a little tail like that and then let's just add a, a tiny bit of color some of that dirt color right to his back light it up just a bit little stripes across his back across the nose there we go and I'll leave that dorsal fin just a little darker because then it looks like it's vertical I know that they play in these waves like this I've seen that seen that happen it's pretty awesome